Here we are, another episode of self-publishing a book online, and we're going to be addressing probably one of the biggest players in the game, in Ingram Spark. And um, I've got some really positive thoughts about Ingram Spark. Kind of a spoiler alert. Sorry about that. Told you that uh, you know already. It's like oh, <laughs> enough said. You don't have to listen to the rest of the podcast. All joking aside, actually, we'll be talking about Ingram Spark Publishing Company and why you should consider them for self-publishing a book online. So make sure you stay tuned to today's podcast. Hey, this is the Self-Publishing with Dale podcast, episode 67, and I am absolutely tickled to death that you took a little bit of time out of your day to spend a little time with me and talking about one of my favorite things, that is self-publishing book online, and this is, oddly enough, I think the sixth part now in a series. I'm going to be talking about all the various avenues when it comes to self-publishing your books online and give you the most comprehensive overview of all of the different major publishing platforms to consider. And I thought one of the best ways to pivot away from Amazon and the Amazon alternatives was going into aggregate publishing. And the, one of the ones that are leading the pack right now is Ingram Spark. Before we do jump into things, oddly enough, there's another aggregate publisher I wanna give a big shout out to. This actual podcast is exclusively sponsored by Lulu. You interested in independent publishing? Have you heard of Lulu? Uh, they've been in the game for a long time, providing high quality printing for low cost and more ways than ever to connect with your audience. Best of all, everything on Lulu is completely free to use. No upfront costs, no hidden fees, just great print on demand to help you get the most out of your book. Just visit the sponsored link at dalenix.com lulu to set up your free account today and try it out for yourself. Okay, so by the way, I just want to kind of just give you a heads up that next week we will be talking about Lulu. Uh, they will be my next um, featured thing. I wanted to build a little bit of hype before we jumped into it. So let's go ahead and address the problem first off. There are too many thinking platforms to publish on. It's so overwhelming. I mean, gosh, the modern day self-publishing model is better than ever and it's so accessible but now it gets to a point that anybody's new to this business you're probably going to be overwhelmed by the options and then to add to that you're thinking okay well dale i'd like to publish here and i would like to publish here and i'd like to publish here but there's the issue of okay i've already shared with you five different platforms in amazon apple kobo Let's see your Google Play as well as Barnes and Noble, okay? But what if you don't wanna deal with five different tax forms? What if you don't want to deal with five different dashboards? That's where aggregate publishing comes into play. Aggregate publishing works this way. You upload your book to that platform and then they send it out. They distribute it to different areas on your behalf. Pretty cool, right? Now, of course, there's a you know a little marginal fee that they're gonna go ahead and take out of all of your royalties, but ultimately, at the end of the day, it saves you a lot of time and heartache. Well, that's where we're gonna go ahead perfectly segue over to Ingram Spark and talking about them. Ingram Spark is actually an Ingram content owned group. Now, I'm gonna be talking about Ingram content group off and on if you ever tune into this podcast you may also know one of the other publishing platforms by ingram content group called lightning source and you're probably going hmm, no not really dale well i'm going to tell you about them later on but i do want to let you know that lightning source fulfills distribution for expanded distribution on kdp so let me say that a little bit less wordy so you know how there's kindle direct publishing they have expanded distribution well, the company that distributes that is Lightning Source, who is, oddly enough, owned by Ingram Content Group, which Ingram Content Group happens to own Ingram Spark as well. Now, when it comes to Lightning Source, it's a little bit more complex. There's a few more moving parts to it. All that say this, that Ingram Spark is probably the option I always send self-publishers to if they're looking for you know something that's gonna be a good aggregate publisher. All right, so let's get it out of the way. They handle ebook and print book uh, distribution. Now, they are known for the widest distribution for print books. In fact, they have over 40,000 distribution options. Yeah, 40,000. I reached out to them and I really poked them a couple times. One of them, one of the times they came back and I asked them, said, hey, could you give me a list of the 40,000 different platforms? 
And they said, no, we're sorry, that's private, but there's a short list of those things here on our site at XYZ. I can't remember what it was. So they gave probably about a couple dozen of those, but they didn't list all 40,000. So I'm kind of like, okay, thanks for being ambiguous. So I came back and I said, hey, you know, I'm kind of doing this for my channel. Could you please tell me what the 40,000 are? They came back with pretty much, hey, here's a list, but this list is always changing. So hence why we don't give the entire 40,000 out to the self-publishers. So I'm kind of like, well, I thought it was, private. What? I, I what? It, it was kind of confusing to me. It's a bit ambiguous. Ingram Spark, if you could just do us all a huge favor. I don't think it's private. All right. I find it hard to believe that that's a private list because our books are going to those platforms. So if you could just do us a huge favor, put that together. So we all at least have an idea of where our books are going to. So then we can send traffic to those different areas based on a customer's needs. That's why we want to see the list. Alrighty, kind of getting off that soapbox here for just a second here. Let's go back over here. When it comes to Ingram Spark, there is a high barrier of entry. Now, it's on a couple of different accounts. The very first thing is they have setup fees. If you want to distribute to them, it is a free account. But as soon as you want to publish something to the platform, there's a $49 setup fee. And if you want to update, a manuscript of some sort that is a $25 fee and if you want to do ebooks by themselves that's a $25 fee um, there are codes available online that you can find and it will waive those things so you can probably just simply Google up Ingram spark coupon code and you'll probably end up finding something I don't have a coupon code right off the top of my head here uh, but Google will be your friend in this instance However, um, what I've used is actually the Alliance of Independent Authors. They're actually a nonprofit organization. It's run by indie authors for indie authors and part of the membership, it is a paid membership, being part of Ally, they actually waive the fees for Ingram Spark. So I ended up getting Ally membership last year. So anytime I upload, I don't have to worry about a thing. And here's the thing is, I believe it runs somewhere north of about $100 to be an Ally member. And there's numerous benefits, by the way, besides this. Um, but somewhere north of $100, if you think about it this way, if you if you publish two books in the course of a year on Ingram Spark, you've more than made up for it. Or let's say that you publish one book and you update it twice or three times, you have more than made up your for that fee. So it's something to kind of consider. You can head over to dalelinks.com slash ally, that's A-L-L-I, to uh, get yourself set up with an ally membership through my affiliate link. But, um, all right, so there's those coupon codes and there's that way we can waive that, all right? So there's ways around it. Okay, enter the ISBNs. This is the next barrier of entry. So some of you might know that as the International Book Standard Number. It's essentially like the numerical identifier of your book. You need to have ISBNs to distribute. And it has to actually be on your ebook and it has to be on your print book. They're very, very strict about that. You need to have that. Um, now, based on your region, you can also, you know, say for instance, here in the US, you can go to Balker and you can get your ISBNs. You can go to Nielsen if you're in the UK and get your ISBNs, or you can even buy them through Ingram Spark. I can't remember, it wasn't cheap, but it wasn't expensive. I think it might've been like $59 or $89. Compare that to, say, if you get a single one on Balker, it usually runs like $100 to $125, which is absolutely absurd. You want to make sure you buy your ISBNs in bulk, just a little bit of an FYI, FY, if you will. But um, the really cool thing is they quietly, Ingram Spark quietly rolled out a feature to the U.S., sorry, this is the U.S. only, to where if you needed an ISBN, they actually would provide you with that for free. Pretty cool. But... There's a big buddy in this one here, all right? That is, if you use a coupon code, you can't get the free ISBN. Okay, so if you want to get your, your upload fees waived, you can't get the free ISBN. Now, I don't know how that works in, in collaboration with an Ally membership. I have not tested it out. I'm most likely just going to come with my own ISBN and just be done with it. But either way, just know that when you do get an ISBN for free through Ingram Spark, you must pay for your upload fees. And the very next thing is remember that Ingram Spark owns that imprint. So that means that you cannot take that ISBN and publish elsewhere. So you can't grab that ISBN and go, oh, well, I'm just going to go ahead and take Ingram Spark's ISBN and publish it over on KDP. 
or publish it on Apple or publish it elsewhere. I had a viewer more recently ask me about ISBNs and sorry to rabbit trail here for just a moment. Uh, someone said, I, I don't get it. I get this free ISBN, but I can't publish it elsewhere. The best analogy I could give them was this. Think about free ISBNs in this way. I'm inviting you to come over to my house, okay? You come on in and I allow you to use my kitchen, okay? You can use my kitchen and I say, you got your own pot? And if you got your own pot, I'll let you go ahead and cook on my, my stove top. No issue, because you brought your own pot. And you can take that pot with you and you can cook in somebody else's house and in your own house if you want to. There's no consequence to me. However, if you come in and you go, oh, I don't have any pot, you know, can I use yours? So I'll go ahead and give you my pot to use and you can go ahead and cook. But you can't take that pot with you. You can't go, well, hey, I'm done cooking. I'm gonna go ahead and take this pot over to my friend's house. I'm gonna be like, no, that's my pot. Like you leave it here, it stays here. So just know that anytime you get a free ISBN on whatever platform you're utilizing, be it Amazon KDP or Ingram Spark or elsewhere, uh, that free ISBN must stay on that platform. So don't take someone's cookware out of their house. They just don't appreciate it. If you bring your own cookware, totally cool, fine. Alrighty, so um, let's go ahead and discuss each one of these options when it comes to eBooks. Now, they accept one file format, that's it, it's EPUB. And I think it's EPUB 2 or EPUB 3. They prefer what's called flowable text, or they call it flowable text. I've called it reflowable text. Essentially, if you have a mobile device of some sort, when you utilize it on here, you can make the fonts bigger, you can make them smaller, so on and so forth. Everything is adjustable to the reader. However, there's something that's called fixed layout, and it works something kind of like a PDF in that you can't change the size of the font. You can change the size of the image and zoom in on it, zoom out, but beyond that, you can't really tweak anything else on that. So they prefer flowable text. If you have a fixed layout ebook, through EPUB, by the way, it still needs to be EPUB, uh, they will only distribute to Apple and Kobo for you, and that's the ebook, so not print. So just know that ahead of time. I would highly recommend you get flowable text. I've called it reflowable. I don't know if I've been saying it wrong this, all these years, but all right, so here's the ambiguous part that just kind of, oh, grinds my gears, grinds my gears so much. It's the royalty structure. And the Ingram Spark royalty structure is just, it's, it's veiled in ambiguity. There's just, there's no easy way to track down how much you get for royalties, you know, unless you actually publish to the platform. And sadly, I have yet to do this. I only have outside information and some of the stuff that I've studied here. What I've found were some articles off of Ingram Spark of all things. I look everywhere in Ingram Spark. I can't get a solid answer on this one. It is the ebook royalties, and they say it's 40% for ebooks. Now, 40%, there's, there's no 70%, there's no 25% or 35%, it's 40%, that's it. You compare that to something like Amazon KDP, where you're getting 70%, or on the low end, at 35%. You look at something like Apple Books, and again, you're looking at 70%, and you, you, you get the idea. So it kind of makes me wonder, ugh. Yeah, they're distributing it for you. So they're going to take their fee as a middleman. And that fee is 60%. Is that worth it? I don't know. I've yet to utilize the publishing option for ebooks. So the next one, and this is the part that I'm most excited about, is the print books. The print books are excellent quality. Just absolutely second to none when it comes to publishing on Ingram Spark. I actually did a self-published book unboxing series where I had reviewed some of the different options and Ingram Spark was one of them. Good friend of the channel, uh, Jordan Ring, uh, actually Rob Archangel, his uh, friend sent this to me and it's a hardback book and the quality is just unparalleled. It is absolutely fantastic. So with that being said, um, you, I'm just hard pressed for you to find anybody better. There's probably some that are comparable. I think Lulu is pretty good. KDP is pretty good. Barnes and Noble is probably the second to Ingram Spark when it comes to quality. In fact, I think they're neck and neck, but their quality is excellent. Now, here's the beauty of having print distribution through Ingram Spark. 
It is their wide distribution. And on top of that, you get to have distribution to brick and mortar stores. There's a little bit of an asterisk there. And the reason is they recommend that you mark down your wholesale cost, a wholesale discount, if you will, to get distribution to the different avenues. And they recommend you do a wholesale discount of 55% or greater. They say that you're less likely to get into a brick and mortar store if you have something that's more expensive. So you can see how it's like, oh, do I wanna take that 55% cut? Ah, oh, maybe not. So what I did was I played around with costs. I said, okay, what would I get if I had, let's say for instance, a five by eight book, roughly 108 pages, it had white interior, black and white ink, okay? We've got all that set. It's a, it's a paperback, by the way, and I charged it at $10, and I pulled the wholesale discount off completely. I found that without a wholesale discount, it was at 100 per, or excuse me, at 75%. So I was getting $7.50 out of the $10 I was doing that. So not bad. They're only taking 25% sans the print fees and such. Sign me up. I kind of like that. But they encourage you in order to get distribution into brick and mortar stores. And by the way, if you ever hear me say brick and mortar, that's like physical stores. So there's sometimes I say brick and mortar and I assume everybody knows what that means. So it's like if you want to get into Barnes and Noble stores and such, um, or, or Walden books. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a bad joke. Too soon? Um, any rate, uh, well, when it comes to what you're going to get paid for the print books, it's going to vary. It, it just varies so much on the type of book you're putting out, how much the print costs are going to be, how many pages you have. Um, if you're adding in the wholesale discount, which I would recommend, especially if you want to get into stores. And by the way, getting into stores... Uh, brick and mortar stores are still very much a viable option to consider. So I hate to say this, but when it comes to the royalty for print books, it just varies. It's just so different based on your needs. And I would say you just got to simply look up Ingram Spark royalty um, calculator, I think it is, and it'll pull up. They actually have a calculator. You can tell them exactly what you need as far as um, you need as far as you know the the trim size all that kind of stuff and you you get it all all done so uh at any rate um one thing as we start to transition over here i just want to kind of hit on a couple other points before we start to wrap up today's podcast they don't have audiobook distribution so that's not an option will they handle audiobooks i don't know i think it's just one of those cases that they know that they're strong at what they're doing with ebooks and print books so they haven't offered something like this yet I'd be curious, and I, I think maybe I probably ought to get Robin back on, uh, Robin Cutler, the CEO of Ingram Spark, back onto my channel, maybe have an interview with her and ask her where she sees Ingram Spark heading over the next five to 10 years, and maybe if they're going to add audiobooks somewhere down the line. Uh, either way, I don't see any sign of that just yet. Uh, how do they pay you out? They actually pay you out 90 days after the close of the month for your print books. This is the part that gets me scratching my head, it's the next part. It actually, they pay you out 120 days after the close of the month. So nearly half a year, you're going to get paid out for your eBooks. So the 90 days after the close of the month, I'm not too salty about that. It makes sense, especially if they're doing 40,000 distributors, um, all, all different retailers. Okay, I'm fine by that. But the 120 days? What? I, I'm kind of clueless on this. They do pay you out through ACH or otherwise direct deposit, as some folks call it. And they also do PayPal. So those are the two options. Um, I'm going to give you my final thoughts when it comes to Ingram Spark here in just a moment. Uh, before I do, I just want to do a really quick plug. Hey, it's my mission this year. And I want to really make an impact in your life. If you're an author and you're listening to this podcast or you're watching it over on YouTube, it... Um, I want to make a positive impact in your life. In fact, I want to positively impact 100,000 different authors and self-publishers out there. And the way that I'm able to measure that, it's going to be a little tricky. It's going to be up to you to decide if, if I've earned that trust, if I have done my duty in making a positive impact, be it that you were able to publish your first book, or maybe that you were able to make your first $1,000 or maybe that you were able to, I don't know, get some information you didn't otherwise know and benefited from that. But if I've done that for you, 
Do me a huge favor. I want you to go over to my YouTube channel right now, dalelinks.com slash YouTube, and you're going to hit that subscribe. Ring the bell notification icon so you don't miss a single one of the videos, of course, but hitting that subscribe will indicate to me that I'm definitely on track to affecting and positively affecting 100,000 authors' lives, and I hope that you are one of those folks. So again, dalelinks.com slash YouTube so you can go ahead and get subscribed. Alrighty, so um, my final thoughts when it comes to Ingram Spark. Uh, first of all, you can set up a free account over at IngramSpark.com. Um, are they worth it? Is Ingram Spark worth it? I, actually, I believe it is. I believe Ingram Spark absolutely is. Consider them at least for print distribution. And one of the things I would uh, I'd recommend is rather than, if you feel like doing the extra steps, rather than distributing through expanded distribution and KDP, I would recommend trying out Ingram Spark. Just remember the barrier of entry. You have your own ISBN, it's an option for you. If you don't, maybe not. And remember, you also have the upload fees to consider. So, okay, if you're willing to jump through all those, print distribution, definitely worth it. If you're just looking to self-fulfill print runs, another fantastic option. The nice thing about using Ingram Spark, unlike KDP, if you want to do paperback books and you want to self-fulfill, you have to actually publish. You have to publish through them and make it available on their platform. But let's just say, for instance, you're like, no, I don't want it on Amazon or I don't want it through Ingram Spark's different channels. They allow you to do that. They allow you to self-fulfill print runs. And I think that's kind of cool. I really like that option. So um, when it comes to eBooks, mm, I'm a little underwhelmed until they can otherwise tell me a good reason to use their ebook distribution, especially at 40%. And especially since it's mired in ambiguity, it would make a huge difference if they can kind of just pull back the curtain, tell people exactly what they're going to get instead of having a search around and find a random post from someone from 2017 or 2014. All right, but uh, overall, Ingram Spark, love it. I'm gonna be bullish when it comes to this platform here in 2020. I mean, set it to Robin. I plan on publishing my very first book, Pivoting Away From Fitness, over into the Ingram Spark platform, and I'll be doing the print book through there. Hey, I just wanna tease really quick. We are talking about aggregate publishing, and oddly enough, the exclusive sponsor here of the channel, Lulu, I'm going to be talking about them next week, so you're going to want to make sure you tune into that one. And uh, you're going to hear a little bit about some of the problems they were having earlier this year, but how they are absolutely crushing it, and they're on track again. I'm so excited for the gang over at Lulu because now they're ready to rock and roll, and they want to do that. So if you want to make music with them, definitely uh, go on over and check, take a look at them at dalelinks.com slash Lulu. And of course, stick around to next week's podcast, episode 68, where we'll be talking about Lulu. Hey, um, a little call to action as we start to get ready to wrap things up. Subscribe or follow me on your preferred podcast platform and leave me a review. Speaking of review, uh, anytime that you drop that review, I'm keeping an eye out. I, I watch chartable.com is the name of a uh, dashboard that I have that shows me all the different reviews. Well, at any rate, over on Apple Podcasts in Great Britain, uh, published on July 29th this year, Cotswold King actually said, lots of useful information. That was the title. And he further went on to say, have just discovered the show. Very useful information for self-publishers of all varieties of books and eBooks. Dale has covered a lot of topics. You should definitely go through the back list of episodes if you're looking for something particular. Cotswold, thank you so much. And I couldn't agree with you more. Honestly, you can go back there. I mean, we're right now just on episode 67. And oddly enough, uh, there are episodes prior to this where actually I had uh, grabbed some old YouTube videos and uploaded those ones. Eh, they're youtube horrific, But uh, beyond that, if you want to hear the uh, past 67 episodes, by all means, go take a look at them, especially the last five episodes where I talked about self-publishing a book online. And as we continue to go into this series. I want to thank you, of course, again for tuning in. In the meantime, and in between time, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale, and I will chat with you next week.